So we've come out today to sit in the park on a winter's day and um, have a little bit, have a little chat between you and I about conversations and what they mean. So um, Mendel was born out of some of your struggles with anxiety um, a few years ago. And um, I think I got a really good perspective on that as one of your close mates during that time. Mm. And I know it was a pretty tough time for you. It was, yeah. It's, I probably noted down as the hardest experience I've gone through in my life. Yeah. Um, it was a, I look back at it now as a, about a three month period yeah. where um, my mind was in turmoil essentially. Yeah, I yeah. really didn't know. I knew what I was feeling, but I didn't really know how to grapple with how to tackle it, how to understand it, what to do, and um, yeah, like I said, it was by far one of the hardest parts of my life. Yeah, because I certainly knew it was it was pretty tough for you at the time, but it's it's difficult from a mate's perspective to really sort of fully understand it. I think. So, look for you, what was um, the scariest part as being a mate? I obviously came towards you as with some pretty confronting sort of conversations and, and things to say. How, how did you sort of respond to that at that mm. time? This being a couple of years ago now. I think um, from my perspective at the time, it's a funny one because we met um, sort of maybe two years before. Yep. We'd worked together. Yeah, we did, yeah. When we met, it was in architecture and um, we sort of walked in on the first day together, starting on the first day. And, and I knew you as sort of this really upbeat person at the time. And, and we had what was a really, really good year for me. Um, working together in what was... For probably both of us. Yeah, really. for both of us. It was unreal. Us. It felt like a really positive friendship. I think the times that we had when we started out were just incredibly... It was always positive focus. We focused on work, we focused mm. on footy. There wasn't much dialogue at all about mental health. So I think the scariest thing for me when you sort of brought it to my attention was just the, the unknowing of it. We had a relationship that was based on Friday night drinks yeah. and, and like yeah, exactly. talking uh, during the week about footy results and yeah. and what we got up to. Um, I think um, it was also my sort of feeling on was that I also didn't want to didn't want to be too overbearing to mm -hmm. in that time and it was it's it's a confusing spot to be as a as a good friend um, knowing how to sort of when you brought it to my attention it's it's difficult to know how to react. I think. Yep. There was a point there where um, I was outside of work so I was no longer with you day to day we yeah. were still good mates still catching mm. up some beers yeah. having chats but I I distinctly remember like a couple of texts just kind of being like look I'm just going to front up and let him know what's going on here because I was yeah. going pretty distant that would have been probably pretty heavy and um, hard for you to sort of react to like what was your initial thoughts on that? Each situation feels really unique in the way that it goes about and, and I don't think you can ever really be prepared for that chat as a mate because sometimes you don't see it coming or Yep. or it, it sort of takes you aback a little bit and, and, and unless you're really in it yourself I think it's, it's really hard to sort of hear it and, and grapple with the magnitude of it. Just to give people a bit of an insight so yeah. like for me I was grappling with some pretty severe anxiety at mm. the time and it wasn't one trigger, it wasn't uh, football alone, it wasn't um, some things in my personal life, it was probably a combination of these things all happening yeah. at the one time. Mm. Um, I had some relationships break down, family and personal. Mm. I had um, some football worries. Yeah. So like for me, like the physical effects were just like a lack of sleep, yeah. a lack of diet, um, racing mind that you just like, I struggled to grapple with. Yeah. Um, I knew that, well, I, I guess I wanted to voice to you what was going on. Mm. I wasn't necessarily looking for your advice. I more just wanted some sort of, some sympathy or some empathy. Did you feel like you had to sort of do something or did you more, it's, I think as a mate, you want to you want to sort of be there for them as much as you can and, and it's, it's sort of easy to want to solve it, I think. Yeah. I think the hardest thing is that when you're chatting to a close mate about something that they're, a lot of things in life are solvable mm -hmm. and especially with those close to you, you just want to do what you can to, to get it done, get it out the back door and move on. Yep. What you don't understand is that it's, it's, not, it's not necessarily about just fixing it no. in that time and I don't think that there's anything that is in my position in that time that I could have really done that's just going to solve it because no. on your end of things it's completely complex in the way that it's come about. Mates may be confronted with these sort of circumstances in mm. the future where um, yeah. someone who they're close to might reach out and we're probably just encouraging them to, to understand that you're not a professional in this space. It's more about just showing that level of empathy 
um, and that level of care towards your mate that yeah. during these tough times you'll always be there for them whether it be catching up more regularly checking in mm. to call and see how they're going yeah. Um, yeah, and yes. just being like an ear there for for, the, for them to listen to because for someone like yourself who's sort of drawing upon some experiences with me you haven't been through this so you, mm. you can't really sort of say what you did in, in those sort of circumstances yeah. you more just have to um, like I said empathise yeah. um, and just show that level of care what do you reckon the conversations that we had meant to you were they for me I was in like a terrible mindset so like I was I was looking for answers for lots of things yeah. um, I just wanted you to sort of obviously first of all understand what I was going through because I was I wasn't replying to texts I'd miss a few of your calls and um, that's just an element of me and what a lot of people do when they're feeling that certain way just drawing away from society kind of running away from from yeah. problems um, so I just wanted you to first and foremost understand that me not replying or being yeah. different was because of a certain reason yeah um, and not because I was being rude or yeah um, so forth so but I guess what I was looking for in you was just for one for you to understand what was going on mm. and, and then two just I don't know in a way hold me accountable just to make sure that I was doing okay because yeah. like I said I'd, I'd, I'd never felt that way before yeah. and I was pulling on everyone at that time to try and help pull me back together. Yeah, I think the important thing is that from my end too not to, not to assume that you not responding by a text is, is, is a slight on our friendship or anything like that. And exactly I think in right. the early stages, it was, I had to sort of get my head around and it's, it's, it's again, it's about being present for them, but not, not expecting too much from it either. And, yep. and do, just doing everything that I could to try and know that you're, you've got me there if you need me. I think what we're trying to show here is like mm. how powerful the idea of conversation can be. If you just show that level of, um, like I said, care or be there for those kind of conversations. Mm. I think um, the power of that on that person will do more than you probably think it will be doing. Yeah. It'll help them sort of get out of their own minds. It'll gather their thoughts, gather their feelings, mm. and just sort of verbalise what they're going through. And those little conversations that you, where you can potentially just reach out by text and just say, yep. "Hey, mate, how are you going? Yep. Like, haven't heard from you in a while. Just wanted to check in." Especially guys of our age, I reckon. Yeah. Um, we're at a point where we're sort of expected to, we're coming back into society now, we're allowed mm. to mingle, but it's, it's okay to sort of be a, a guy in your 20s and just send a text to a mate and just be like, hey yeah. mate, hope you're well, mm. how have you been, haven't heard from you in a while, just mm. checking in, yeah. and just sort of show that level of vulnerability and just see how they're going mm. and give them the opportunity, if it's there, for them to open up. I'm very glad that at least we were able to have really strong conversations at the time and hopefully for a lot of people they can take something out of it over this time and, and maybe find their conversations themselves. Exactly right. mm -hmm.